Before we get started with the video today, I want to let you guys know there are two main audiences for this video. One are those who know what's going to happen. This is just going to be for entertainment for you to laugh or make fun of what you see. Two is going to be the person who doesn't really know what to expect because they're going by the specifications provided by the manufacturer, those listed on websites, those listed on eBay or Amazon. This video is education for you and also a little entertainment too, I hope. So stick around and let's find out how this amplifier performs. Technical Pro is a brand that we've had many requests for testing their amplifiers. Started back in 1971 in the South Bronx. Today we're going to look at one of their amplifiers. They have several different models listed. The one we're going to check out is the AX2000, which listed $199. Closer look on their website shows the model. Looks pretty nice. It's got the VU meters there in the middle. Got some knobs there for adjusting the gain. And again, the price shows $199. Now we look at the specs on the website. It says, hey, this thing weighs nine pounds, which is kind of light for a pro-amp, honestly. Peak power as 2,000 watts. Now that throws up some flags. Also, they show RMS power as 600 at two ohms. 460 at 4 ohms and 240 at 8 ohms. We found the amplifier on eBay and we confirmed the specs. Again, 240 watts at 8 ohms, 460 at 4 ohms, 600 at 2 ohms, peak power of 2000 watts. Now, this amp sells brand new on eBay for $109.95, $110 for a pro audio amplifier putting out that much power. I would say that's a pretty good deal, wouldn't you? Let's take this amplifier out of the box and see what it's all about. All right, first accessory you see in the box is the IEC power cord. It's approximately four feet long. It's not very thick either. And also we have the owner's manual for the AX2000. And I was flipping through the manual, hoping to find the specifications that they had on the website and also on eBay. And there is no specs that I can find here for power output. So that's very odd. Also, check out the way this thing is bent, and it was bought as a new item that was open box. I'm not sure what's up with that. It looks like it was dropped on the corner. But again, we'll verify that the amplifier works okay. It powers up and everything is good. Let's look here. You see on the front, we have the power switch. We have channel A control, channel B control, and then we have some LEDs as well as a clip indicator. Not a whole lot going on there. On the back, you can see there's two fans, one on either side. The really odd thing about this, being a pro audio amplifier, is it only has RCA inputs. Usually a pro audio amp has XLR with TRS inputs in the middle. Very strange that this one only has RCA inputs. That tells me right off the bat that a suspect for being a pro amp. Also, it's designed in the USA, engineered in Japan, but made in China. So this thing is just worldly i mean everybody over the world got some of the hands in this thing trying to figure out what's going on i'm not real sure there there are binding post outputs for the speakers that's good and also the standard iec power plug connection here it is rated for 115 volts so this is a u.s item as far as dimensions 19 inches wide which is standard rack mount eight inches deep 3.5 inches for the height now, since the amp had some damage on the front with the left mounting ear, we decided we'd power it up and make sure it powers up, and it did. Sounded fine. So let's plug in our RCAs from our head unit and also plug in the dual banana plugs here. And on the other side, I did single banana plugs, just making sure everything works the way that it should. These speaker output terminals seem to be okay. I don't have a problem with them. And then we got a much thicker like I said before, power cord to plug in here. So make sure we got all the juice we needed. Let's power it up. You can hear the fans. Now to match this up with our head unit and the dyno, we go ahead and use the DD1 Plus and we go through the setup to set the gain overlap. We set the gain overlap to 10 dB for this test. So here we go. 
Now let's fire up the good old SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. First test is going to be the 8 ohm test. It's rated 240 watts RMS. We'll assume that's 120 per channel. A couple things I want you to notice here on the screen display. Wattage output's on the left. Ohm load is in the middle. You can disregard the voltage because that is just the power for the dyno itself, which is provided by a battery bank. Certified test at 8 ohms, 40 and 35 watts. Yes, my friends, that is not a good start here to the dyno test. Uncertified test takes us up to the clipping point using a 1 kilohertz track, 41 and 38 watts. And it's rated 240 RMS. Those who are buying this amp, that's what they're expecting because that's what the manufacturer is providing. And we're not getting anywhere near that. Dynamically, right at about 50 watts per channel. So, pretty uh, disappointing. Now, 4 ohms is rated 460 RMS. We'll assume that is 230 per channel. Certified test first. Takes us up to 1% distortion. 57 and 48. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! At this point, I guess you can consider it a Mickey Mouse program because this is a joke. But again, this is why I do these tests so you guys can see what you're actually getting for your money. 59 and 55 watts uncertified up to clipping. And again, we're going to run the dynamic test here, which just sends a pulse tone of 1 kilohertz into the amp. This one usually provides the most power of any of the tests. 79, 80 watts, and 75 watts. Now, 2 ohms, the amp is rated. Many pro amps are not rated to handle 2 ohms. This one's rated 600 watts at 2 ohms. We got... 55 and 48. Thanks, Big D. This is Dick Riculous. D <laughs> yeah, and at this point, I know you guys are probably saying, why keep showing it? Well, we're just going to show the rest of the test here. So uncertified up to clipping, 74 and 64 watts at 2 ohms. Then let's run the dynamic test. We're going to show the lights flashing here in the side, give you some extra... Uh, entertainment, 140 and 125 watts, still well shy of that rated power. We'll say at least you tried. I'm not real sure how hard they tried. The results are listed here. You can pause if you want to see all the different numbers. And yeah, let's um, put this on some speakers and see how it sounds to the Elax. Does it make those Elax smack? Let's find out. You've got nothing. I'll keep hustling. <laughs> Now that we've done the amp dyno test and also the sound test, let's find out what's inside. Take off some of the screws here so we can get the top panel off. There's a few across the top. There's some on the side and we'll just lift it off and yeah, look at this. <laughs> hey, where's the thief? I don't think there's anybody back there. You big dummy. So not being any kind of amplifier expert, you can look at this and pretty much say that this is not a 2000 watt amp, not even a 600 watt amp. And look, you see the power supply there. It does have fans, push-pull fans, but I don't know what it's cooling because there's not a whole lot in here to cool. Now, we did take a picture of the transistors, the 1941s and the C5198, and I looked up some specs on one of the websites to find out, hey, you know, what are these uh, transistors rated? And somebody built a monoblock amp using one of each of these. So that tells me that they're probably 200 watts or so for both. According to the Toshiba spec sheet, it's recommended for 70-watt high-fidelity amplifier. 
if they're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. We are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Dick Riculous here. Now, what do we like about the ant? Well, it's inexpensive. It has dual fans, lightweight, easy to move around. It has binding posts for the speaker outputs and it has LED meters that show you your sound output as well as clipping. And that's really about it. As far as things that could be better, it's not really a pro audio amp at all. It has no XLR or TRS inputs. Where's the beef? I mean, you can see the picture there. It's flimsy construction, has a very lightweight power cable. And yeah, the misleading ratings. They don't even give you the correct RMS power output ratings. So you're misled on all the specs on this amp. So I am not recommending that you get one of these unless you really don't need much power. As you saw with the test here, you heard with the speaker sounds. And yeah, I'm just really disappointed that companies still do this. I mean, this is 2022 and we've had amp down on for like 12 years and we've been able to show these type results and show people what they're actually getting. So it does a company no good to falsify ratings so that people buy their products because all we're going to do is just show them off and just show that, Hey, you know, they're not providing accurate information here. So you might want to look somewhere else. So thanks as always for watching. This is big D until next time. I'm out of here. Technical Pro AX2000. Let's try 1.6 ohms. Dynamic burst, one kilohertz. One thirty-eight and one twenty-five. Now these did not run well even at two ohms with the certified test. So we'll try uncertified, one kilohertz, 1.67 ohms. Seventy three and sixty four. Why the heck not? While we're here, let's go ahead and try it. Certified test one percent THD at one point six ohms. Yeah, I did not like that.